What's up guys, welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks and today we're looking at some budget white cards I think you guys could value from putting in your decks. I've noticed I'm putting kind of the same white cards in some of my budget builds and I was like, man, I'm gonna let people know kind of the template I use when I'm making a budget white deck to hopefully help them out in their deck building endeavors. So without further ado, let's get into, well, actually, let me ask you one thing. Do you, are you enjoying these videos? Yeah? yeah? Okay, I thought so. I thought so. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's look at our first one. We have Rumor Gatherer. I love this girl because, well... A lot of cards, they cap off like um, the Vampire Lady. She caps off at one card per turn. Rumor Gatherer does as well, but you can just scry as many times as you want. As long as you keep creating creatures, you can keep scrying. So she's better than this Vampire in every way, but for some reason, she's like 20 cents and the other one's like $5. Makes no sense to me, but anyway, we shove Rumor Gatherer in any deck we can. Next up, we have... Balden Sentry Herd Master. Now this one is kind of new. I don't know how long it's going to stay budget, but it's kind of a Pathbreaker Ibex in white. Notably, it doesn't give trample, but honestly, with how white or how wide white usually goes, that might not be an issue. Additionally, it does switch it to where you deal combat damage judged on your toughness, so it's going to be really good in those decks regardless. But like I said, Pathbreaker Ibex in white, pretty dang useful next up we've got audric master tactician now this essentially not only makes it to where you can take out your opponent's key pieces but it also makes it to where you can uh basically give all of your creatures unblockable it's pretty insane this card's 30 cents and it gives all your creatures unblockable and you can take out your opponent's uh key pieces pretty insane you could make um you know a a Findhorn Elf, block a 1-1 one, one Soldier. You lose a Soldier, they lose their Mana Dork. Sounds pretty good to me. Next up, we have Finale of Glory. Now, this Finale never took off, and I think it's because of the price. But honestly, guys, if we can get to 12 mana, we can win the game, right? This is insane. I don't know if you have any, you know, Selesnia decks. Maybe just some white decks that also have green that have a, the ability to create a ton of mana. I would throw this in there because if we can get this off for like X equaling 10, you get a ton of creatures. And if they don't board wipe, you just win the game from there. Sounds pretty good. Pay 10 mana, win the game. That's what the green finale does, right? But this one's budget. Next up, we have Norn's Wellspring. I really like Norn's Wellspring for the same reason I like Rumor Gatherer. Whenever one of your creature dies, you're just going to scry. It's like free value. Throw this in an Aristocrats deck, and you're off to the races. Additionally, it can draw you cards, so that's amazing. Zerium, Golden Wind. I like this guy because... Wait, Golden Wing. Yeah, I can read. Okay, I like this guy because he can double the amount of uh, griffins you have each turn. The first turn, maybe he deals damage, you get two griffins. Okay, whatever. Next turn, you have four griffins, and then eight. He gets out of hand really quickly, and I'm a big fan of this guy. He just hasn't taken off yet, so let's let's buy us some gold wings and, you know, pump them to the moon. Next up, we have Elaine Harbury's Busybody. Aside from looking like, you know, the stepsister from Shrek, she's pretty good. She can draw you cards equal to the amount of tokens you control, or not draw, sorry, sorry. You get a look at the top cards of your library equal to the amount of tokens you've created that turn, and then you get to pick one of those cards, put it into your hand. Basically, even if you only create one token, she still draws you a card. Pretty dang good. We already play cards that do that, so she's budget throwing the deck. Next up, we have Darksteel Mutations. Have you ever seen someone cast Swords to Plowshare on their own commander? I have, and it's because of this card. It's pretty, pretty hilarious. Nothing is more infuriating than your commander not only being indestructible, but it having no abilities. Usually you can kind of like politics your way out of it. Like, hey, man, if, if you kill my commander, I'll do that. But it's got indestructible, you know, and exiling is a key piece especially with so many graveyard uh, decks running around so if you can get them to use that on their own creatures that's pretty amazing i mean they could just use artifact removal but you know or sorry enchantment removal but it's more fun to watch them do that next up we have felidar retreat felidar retreat just puts in work do you need a bigger board well felidar can or retreat can do that do you already have a big board but you need to buff up that board 
Felidar Retreat can do that too. This card does everything and I love it. Shove it in the deck. Next up, we have Generous Gift. Generous Gift is basically just a color shifted Beast Within. And Beast Within is amazing. So Generous Gift is amazing. Notably, it can help out with that Dark Steel's uh, mutation scenario. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying these videos. If you want more of them, I personally enjoy doing them. But I'm going to give you guys what you want. So as always, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors. And I'll see you in the next one.